Hi, welcome to Inside View. I'm your host, Sarah Lunsford. And today I am very excited to bring you a longtime supervisor who is actually going to retire just in a little bit. Hi, Marina. How are you Hi, doing? Sarah. Thank you for I'm coming good. on the program. Sarah, how long have we known each other? Uh, you know, we've known each other <coughs> at least 20 plus years yeah. because I started reporting for the Ledger Dispatch oh, in 1999. Right. And that was when I started um, covering, the, covering oh. the board. And then you were my third guest on Inside View in 2005. So we've known each <laughs> other a long time and we've seen a lot of stuff. Well, you were one of the very few people that had political experience mm -hmm. in Sacramento. Yes. <laughs> so your questions were very poignant uh -huh. and very pointed, <laughs> and we couldn't pull the wool over you in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Thank Try you. As we Try might. as you might. I'm yeah. like, wait a minute. <laughs> So we've known each other a long time, but you were on the board, as was Tom Tryon, yes, for a long time before I even and appeared. Tommy Taylor and, and Tommy Mike Taylor, Delordo, yes, and, and Mike Nicole. Delordo, yes. So I want to step back a little bit and have you tell people how you ended up in Calaveras County. What did you do before you came to Calaveras? I was PG&E manager in Humboldt County. <laughs> so I wound up at some point changing ratepayers for taxpayers. Yes. <clears throat> and transferred from Humboldt mm -hmm. that had lots of growers, yes. cannabis growers, <clears throat> that probably introduced me to the cannabis topic when we finally had it in Calaveras. Exactly. And um, came to Calaveras in 1987. As the oh. PG&E manager okay. for here in the mother load. So you were up in Humboldt when the growers were still family, family generally growers. family growers. Yes. Okay, yes. okay. Which is kind of how it was here for a little while, yeah. right? And now it's kind of getting back to that is my yeah. understanding. So you've had experience with that. Yes. Okay. And so how did you end up coming to Calaveras? How did you... Well, since this is my sayonara, <laughs> to try and save my marriage. Okay, all right. My husband and I had owned a business in Pioneer. Oh, and okay. And PG&E had asked me to come back to work okay. as a manager in Humboldt, which So I have I to did. interrupt you, though. What <clears throat> business did you own in Pioneer? We owned a liquor store. Okay. And I also owned a restaurant. What restaurant did you own? The Villa. The Villa, okay. Owned a restaurant in Pioneer, okay. uh, sold it, moved to Humboldt mm -hmm. when they asked uh, you to come back. When they asked me to, pg &E asked me to come back. Mm -hmm. Then my husband came back to Pioneer. Oh. We bought the liquor store. Okay. And then I came to Calaveras. Okay. Hoping to salvage something. Anyway, life is good. Yes. And yeah. Calaveras has been wonderful to me and. Um, as a single mom and to mm -hmm. my daughter. It was truly a community that helped me raise her. It's, that's always been my understanding from just being in the community that that was one thing is that you um, really understood the meaning of community and how supportive everyone yes. is to people who are maybe on their own raising their children yeah. or maybe taking care of their parents on their own. There's, um, and it's not just about services, government services. No. No. It's about community. It's about community. Community, actual community. In Calaveras, you might have difference of opinion, of mm -hmm. course, being a politician, I'm yes. going to say politically, but yes. views. Mm -hmm. But when someone in the community needs something, the wagon circle, mm -hmm. and everybody comes to the fore to They help. do. They do. Very much so. So now, have you seen that um, increase over the years or decrease, or is it sort of the I same? I think it's pretty much the same. Okay. Um, and I think that's what makes Calaveras um, 
a wonderful community. I'll give you an example of why it's fun to live in this county. <laughs> okay. Recently, I was at an establishment, mm -hmm. which I think I have to remain nameless at the okay. moment. Okay, all right. And I walked out and forgot to pay my bill. <laughs> I just, you know, yeah. finished my meal, what mm -hmm. have you, left. Mm -hmm. And when I got home, I said, oh my gosh. So yeah, I called I them up. Mm -hmm. They said, not a problem. You know, I went back the next day. Yeah. And, and so that's what makes being in this county special. It is. It is. Is that you get known and you are part of the community. You're part of the community. Absolutely. And whether you've lived here two years or 25 years or mm -hmm. two or three generations matters not. Mm -hmm. If you want to be part of Calaveras, you can be part of Calaveras. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And your district has changed shape a little bit through the years. <laughs> yes. um, and you have a lot of community events within your district yeah. that you go to, all I of do. them. Pretty much all of them. I pretty much go to all of them. <laughs> I don't think I've ever gone to an event where you weren't there. Um, but then you have different communities within your district that oh, you serve, yeah. right? And of course, the uh, prime example is White Pines and Arnold. Yes. And when I got elected, I heard from White Pines and they wanted a sign saying White Pines mm -hmm. and when it was established. Mm -hmm. I said, fine. Mm -hmm. I said, I can do that. I didn't yeah. know if I could do it or couldn't <laughs> do it, you know. So we got them a sign, White Pines, established in 1936. Yeah. And then probably a month later, someone put a sign up that said, this is not Arnold. <laughs> and a month later, it was gone. And a month later, it was back. And now exactly. it's become an iconic sign. It is. It is. And I think that's true for most parts of the county. Mm -hmm. Every community has its own personality it does and it's chauvinistic in its own way mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's what kind of makes it special dorrington is dorrington it is not arnold no nope. and why pines is not arnold and there's douglas flat and valacito and they are not and, murphy's and they're not murphy's <laughs> and exactly. tamarack is not and sky high is not yep absolutely so um yeah absolutely so what made you actually get in to politics to begin with instead of just serving the community as a citizen because it's a politics is a whole other level people don't realize how rough and tumble it actually is even in our little community right what made you want to jump into that um, a moment in time it was serendipity <laughs> okay I had left pg and &E in June they had a reorg and I was kind of mm -hmm. given the choice of staying Mm -hmm. here and leaving okay. or going back to the Bay Area oh. and I was not interested okay. in going back to the Bay Area and mm -hmm. working in San Francisco and living in Walnut Creek Yeah, and something happens to my kid mm -hmm. where here I lived in Murphy's and worked in Angels or even Jackson and mm -hmm. You were so near. it was a community yes, that kept absolutely. me here. Okay. So um, that was in June, and then there was the recall going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Politicians don't like to use no, that they word. Don't. <laughs> well, one, I didn't even know I was in a district, <laughs> and I didn't know why it was going on. So yeah. I talked to the incumbent mm -hmm. and asked him what was happening, and he told me. <clears throat> And I thought, oh, okay, I'll so do you, it. You thought you'd just throw your hat in the ring? Yeah, because I had always been political, but a backroom political, yes. you know, yeah. licking envelopes, making phone calls, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. walking streets. Well, not quite that way, but <laughs> <laughs> handing out pamphlets and flyers. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Let's clarify that, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, okay. And... Um, Four of us ran, and during a recall, it's the highest vote getter. Yes. Versus 50% plus mm -hmm. one. So I won. Wow. And so in June of 93, uh -huh. I became supervisor, and I served a year in a few months mm -hmm. of the incumbent's term. Okay. And then ran again for my own four-year term, which is why I've have odd number versus an even number of years. Okay. <clears throat> and I love it. 
Did you I do know, love it. Did I know what a general fund was? Not a clue. You know, I just learned what district I was in. Mm -hmm. I just learned that every county in California has five supervisors. Yes. Except San Francisco. Because they're a city and county. Oh. And so they have 11. But do, do they the, all serve on the same board? They serve on the, because all the counties were counties. Yes. San Francisco is the city and county, the county at the same of time. San Francisco. Oh, I didn't realize that. <clears throat> Wow, see? Good Learn cocktail chat. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Learn something new every day. Yes. So, so you were learning about was, the whole system. That's right, which I think most new supervisors yeah. do. Yeah. There's a <clears throat> lot. And the and I have to say the staff of Calaveras mm -hmm. is very accommodating to help you learn. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, even today I'm learning new things. An example, I love examples. Mm -hmm. Highway 4 and Tom Bell Road that goes from Tom Bell into the Diggins. Mm -hmm. I got a call, Marita the Grape there at the intersection gets flooded when it rains. Mm -hmm. Can you take care of it? Sure. Mm -hmm. I write the county. County says, Marita, that's not a county road. No. I didn't know that all these years. All these years I've driven that road. All these years that road's been in my district. I never knew it wasn't a county road. It's a state road. Is no, it a state it's road? It's private. Is it private? The from highway from four, highway four from where the to the Duggan is. is to the to oh. the Diggins. So right at where El Dorado and the yeah yeah is <clears throat> that's a private road. Wow. Owned probably by the adjacent yeah. property owners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did I know that? No. Well, there's a lot of things in Calaveras that are very interesting. Let's just use the word interesting and how they've evolved, right? Um, and, you know, easements and right-of-ways, especially with land use issues and yeah. that type of thing. So it doesn't surprise me that it, it's private. It's like private. when you say the word, well, Ponderosa. Well, mm -hmm. which Ponderosa? Mm -hmm. Which districts? Ponderosa near McCollumy Hill mm -hmm. is the Ponderosa off of Highway Four. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. so, it's like which which one are you talking about? Yeah. And depending on which district it is, you're going to approach a different supervisor. <clears throat> yeah. And that type of thing. Yeah. So, now what boards have you sat on <clears throat> through the years? You sat on a lot of them. <laughs> um, the the board of supervisors mm -hmm. we. Um, each take some agencies mm -hmm. and boards that either state required okay. or the county says we want to have a representative. Okay. <clears throat> so, you know, we can maybe mix or match. Usually you try and be on a board for a length of time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not change every year. Exactly. So I've been on the California State Association of Counties mm -hmm. for years. Yes. And I'm on the Area 12 Agency on Aging. Yes. For I have for been years. for years. Yes. You know, my first go around on the board and then when I came back on the board. Okay. So, <clears throat> and then I am on the um, board of the Calaveras Community Foundation, yes. which is not county. No. Nope. Mm -mm. And um, I'm on the advisory board of Big Trees Association. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and it's important. I just, and I'm I, on the board of the Calaveras Wine Grape Alliance. Oh, I didn't know you were on that board, too. Yeah. I, <laughs> they needed, everybody on the board pretty much is in the industry. Okay. And they needed a consumer. So oh, I'm so on the board. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and I think it's important to note that it's super important to have continuity on these boards. Yes. And continuity and length of time. Because what happens when there's too much of a turnover is that the solutions for certain issues that have been solved before yeah. get lost within the transition. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, Absolutely. you know, yes, I, you I know. just wanted to point Be that out. Well, because you have a board. Yes. Of the yeah. For, yeah, we have a peg board. A peg board. Peg board. And, and what does peg mean, Sarah? Uh, public Education Government Very Board. Good. <laughs> I'm like, wow, put me on the spot there. <laughs> peg, peg. So, yeah. Um, 
So you wanted to get into it just to basically ramp up your service level, it sounds like to me is what you're saying. No, I think it was a moment in time. It was just a moment in time, okay. <clears throat> I love politics. Ah. And so here was this opportunity mm -hmm. to be part of my community. Yeah. Did I really know what a board of supervisors did? Not in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But by the end of a year, I definitely knew. You knew, yes. <clears throat> I knew that we represented our districts, mm -hmm. but when we're on the dais, mm -hmm. we are voting for the whole county. Exactly. So if there's an issue mm -hmm. in... Um, Valley Springs or West Point or Copper, mm -hmm. my vote is as important as the supervisor who represents that area when we're voting. Exactly. <clears throat> and you're right. Um, many of the controversial issues were land use. Mm -hmm. and we haven't had those really in the last it's few years. It's been a years while. <laughs> because there hasn't been that much development. Yeah in terms of subdivisions going in, mostly infill. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but and there's yes. a lot of allocation already for um, uh, infill development right. that has not been built out. Right. So, so you know, most there's... of the large development had been in the west end of the county mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in Copper area. Okay. And to realize the decisions that you're making today will have an impact 20 years, 30 years down the road. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think that was the biggest learning curve I had. Okay. Because the issues before you today, but the result of that decision is felt years down the road. Yeah, it's always the downstream effects. <clears throat> the downstream effects, And you Absolutely. have to always like look at <laughs> what could happen. It may not happen but you never know exactly which way the stream will go, right? I or can you, I can think you? I did. I, okay. I pretty much, and I think most of my colleagues did, mm -hmm. when you're approving a development of 200, 300, or 400, you know, and they're doing an environmental impact, mm -hmm. and you're listening to the community, mm -hmm. you know the impact of that decision Okay. Down the road. So you can see it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a supervisor who just votes and not doing their due diligence mm -hmm. isn't doing their job as a supervisor. Okay. And I think it's important for me, the most important thing for my colleagues mm -hmm. is they come prepared. <clears throat> I don't care if we mm -hmm. disagree, even yes. though I think they should always agree with me. <laughs> But I want to know that they've done their homework, that they've read their board packet, they've yes. done their due diligence, they've talked to whomever they needed to. And there's a lot <clears throat> of homework involved with every meeting. I mean, if yeah. you just read the agenda and then look at the actual packet, because years ago, the clerk of the board used to print out a packet for all the journalists, oh, yeah. and we would, it looks like a Bible. <laughs> it's like so much information, right? So even, you know, to go through that, I mean, I know these are part-time positions for the board of supervisors, but it's really a full-time job. You that? Isn't it? It used to be. It's supposed to be. Supposed to be. That's what That's I'm saying. Lot. Technically, <laughs> well, I know. Technically, it's part-time. <laughs> But in reality, it's 40, way 40 more than plus full years time. ago, it might be. Yeah, it yeah. isn't today. I know. I'm like, wait, did I not know something? Did you guys change something? Um, but no, I mean, it is supposed to be a part time position. That's what it's classified as. Yeah. But you guys put it's in not. double and more, quite but that's frankly. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, that's okay. Yeah. I love it. I mean, I love what I do. <clears throat> so, like that. Oh, go ahead. Oh, so what were the most challenging issues that you've had to deal with? <clears throat> I have to say, I mean, you can say like land use and mm -hmm. big developments like Saddle Creek or yeah. Gold Estates, or mm -hmm. I mean, those are challenging ones. But <clears throat> for me, it's the daily phone calls I get. Oh, okay. 
you know, it's your calling about the grate at Highway yeah, 4 on Tom true. Bell Road mm -hmm. that, you know, <clears throat> or about the person who wanted to adopt somebody and was having problems. Oh. <clears throat> or, oh, this was, or the time that I got a call one Friday night, Morita, I know these two, these, there are two dead bodies in this house because their dog is barking. Oh. And I said, oh. Really? Ooh, okay. Did you call the sheriff? We did, but the sheriff said it's an animal control issue, oh. and animal control's not over. You need to come. I know oh. these people have been murdered because their dog never barks. Oh, wow. I said, oh, okay. So mm -hmm. I get in the car, Yes. and I drive to Arnold, thinking, really, I should have gone to you know, the Forest Service, they or have a peace yeah. office. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I go to, I drive to their house. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> the owners had just come home. They had been gone and somebody was take care of their dog and didn't. Oh, okay. So, um, so there we are. <laughs> or then there's the time this, we had a huge snowstorm in Arnold mm -hmm. and a woman called, she's all upset because she couldn't get into her house mm -hmm. and she had, pills she had to take. I said, well, do you mm -hmm. want me to call the hospital? I'll mm -hmm. get some for you and bring them to you. Mm -hmm. No, they're special. Okay, okay. okay. Uh -huh. Well, she kept calling me. Okay. And so I get in the car and I go to her subdivision. I call mm -hmm. a couple of people I yeah. know that live there. And I could see where she's upset. Her house is down and on the, on the downhill oh. side in the snow on Arnold that year was probably about four or five feet mm -hmm. and she couldn't get in. Yeah. And so we shoveled her out and even shoveled her deck and I was so annoyed at myself that I had somebody call and tell her that she could get to her house. She said, oh, you have the wrong house. She, they said, no, we don't have the wrong oh, house. But, but you don't you know, know, right? You don't know when someone calls. I know. You and know. so to me, those are the challenging things. So, like, you know, I have one going on that I hope to resolve soon mm -hmm. about uh, um, an easement. And... Um, mm -hmm. People get frustrated. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. And I do. think my job is to help mitigate that so, in however I can. So sometimes it's just being a bridge between finding the right place person for, or, or place that's right. or whoever for them to talk to, right? And, and with social media, interesting, I have one that came up this week mm -hmm. about barking dogs. That's a continual issue. But what was mentioned was on social media oh. that they had seven dogs and dogs were in cages. Oh, wow. Anyway, it, it was beyond the, the norm. Yeah. So I don't know how to mm -hmm. forward that. So I took a picture. I, oh, I really okay. astute, <laughs> and sent it to the head of the department. Okay. And animal. just said this okay. seems a little out of the norm. Okay. <clears throat> so. so how many phone calls do you get in a week? Typically, um, that's not always phone calls anymore. It's okay. calls, it's emails, it's texts. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's changed through the years. It and, really oh, has. Yeah. It's a lot more texts and emails now mm -hmm. and calls. And I have a county phone and I have a county iPad. I have a personal mm -hmm. iPad and a personal and phone know and, your a number. and they know my life. Exactly. So that's fine. <laughs> I truly <laughs> don't mind. And I think that's what I'm going to miss. Mm -hmm. um, well, they may still call you because they... No, they won't. I'll be out of the country. Oh, that's right. You are actually going on a grand adventure. <clears throat> I am going on a grand adventure, yes. So before we get to your grand adventure, what is your... What is an issue that you feel particularly proud of solving uh, during your time? It could be many issues, actually. I think it's that call you made to me about an issue you had yeah. and wanted help on. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, <clears throat> do I like the fact that um, I think I've made good decisions on land use? Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm made, I don't think, I know, mm -hmm. I made good decisions on the cannabis issue. Mm -hmm. I 
and that was controversial. Yes, very. And I'm very excited that the board's committed to funding an animal shelter. Mm -hmm. I'm real excited about that. I look at some old campaign stuff at 20 years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, Marita, what would you like to do? I want a new animal shelter. <laughs> oh, four years later, oh, Marita, oh, what would you like to one. do? I want an animal shelter. <laughs> so <clears throat> now, you know, the board's made a financial commitment to that. And sometimes, like we were saying earlier, it takes time. Sometimes it takes a lot of time. Yeah, too much time. Too much time. Too much time for that one. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm proud of what we did in building the jail mm -hmm. and the sheriff's office. I mean, I was involved with the funding of that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I'm proud of what the county said. I'm really <clears throat> excited about where the county's going. It's very, I think it's very positive. Mm -hmm. We have a three-year strategic plan. We have a mm -hmm. governance manual or a protocol system. We have an interim CAO who's been a godsend, mm -hmm. Greg Pedro. We're yeah. going to be interviewing for New they ones. are going to be yeah, they are. Yeah. <clears throat> for a new one. Mm -hmm. And I think county staff is really working on as a team. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty um, impressed with where the county's going. Mm -hmm. It seems and, to be in a very positive direction. In a very, and my colleagues that I've been with the last couple of years, mm -hmm. We do well together. Mm -hmm. Don't always agree, but that's okay. I mean, yeah. you bring up Tom Tryon. Mm -hmm. I mean, couldn't be two people more <laughs> <laughs> separate exactly. on how they felt. But it was always never personal, mm -hmm. issue-oriented, and I believe that's how it is with the current board. Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> anyway, it's going to be hard to say goodbye. I like being part of the decision making. Mm -hmm. I like being part of the action. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it was time to let it go. Yep. And, and time to, 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 to go on. do something else. And I'm not sure what that'll look like. And I'm going to just let it flow. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, we are going to end on that. And I know you are going on a grand adventure, so I'm going to wish you very, very well on your thank grand you. adventure. And thank you so much. Thanks, Ooh, Sarah. I have loved interviewing you and knowing you through the years. I have, too. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here on Inside View. And we will wait with anticipation to see what Marita does next, because you know she's not done. Take care. Thank you.